guys, it's Nadia from Leo Dia Designs and I'm back with another quick tutorial. This is another super fun one using these letter molds and also this window film. It's a holographic imprint on this film and we're going to put it right inside um, our mold. I had already pre-cut it. It comes on a roll and I pre-cut it to the uh, shape of the letter that I wanted to place it in here. So. And we'll just fiddle with it a little bit to get it to sit flat and then press it down into the mold. There's no resin yet in this mold. It's just the uh, film that's going to be sticking to the mold. And just flatten that out, try to get out most of the air bubbles. It doesn't really matter if there's little, little, little bits of air bubbles in here, but I tried to get rid of most of it before we get started. Okay, so there we go, and uh, I believe the video here cuts out, and so uh, I don't have the video of me pouring a thin layer of resin, so you can see that I did that there. It wasn't very much. It was only a couple ounces of resin just to kind of cover the bottom, and to draw, I'm going to be using my outliner. If you guys are new to my channel and to my art, um, you may not be familiar with this, so I'm going to play a clip here that explains this product as well as some alternatives. If you've seen this clip before, feel free to skip ahead and I'll see you on the other side. Okay guys, so let's talk about how to draw on your resin. So once your resin's cured, you can use one of these products to actually draw the dandelion design on your coasters. I have my preferred product for this, but I wanted to give you guys some options because what I realized over the last couple of months with the pandemic is that it was becoming increasingly difficult to find the product that I normally use. And I wanted to give you guys options and alternatives just in case you weren't able to find um, my recommended product. So, <clears throat> so before I was a resin artist, I actually used to draw on ceramics and glass. And I used to use this product here. It's called a Vitria, it's by Pebio. It's called Vitria 160 and it's specifically for glass. Um, the way this works is you would draw on the glass or the ceramics and then you would bake the item for about 30 to 40 minutes and that would set the paint onto it. So then it becomes washable, very durable. And um, it's just very specific for that use. But I really enjoyed working with this outliner so I wanted to see if it would work with resin and obviously I wouldn't be able to bake the resin but I figured that maybe if I was able to um, put a clear layer on top then that would seal it in and luckily for me it does work so again I'm sure you're familiar with how this looks but that is how that looks um, the second alternative I came up with was trying to use an acrylic paint such as Deco, this Deco Art Extreme Sheen Pearl, um, which has a similar coloring as the Vitria Pearl. But um, what I was finding when I tried to use it all by itself is that the paint was a little bit too thin, like the viscosity of it was too thin. So you'll see how that turned out on this test piece here. Um, just the, it's just over, just a little bit too runny. So what was happening is that you weren't getting those sharp, um, distinctive design lines in here. It was just kind of all really soft and kind of mushy looking. So wasn't great. But what I just, what I tried after that is I actually mixed a little bit of this Liquitex liquid thick thickening gel to the, um, the deco art. And like I said, not a lot, very little. And what it does is it just thickens it up just enough so that it's perfect to be put into one of these precision applicator bottles. And then you can just pipe it out just like you would if you were doing henna or again, something similar to this. So um, I'll show you what it looks like. Once. So this applicator bottle is very common for henna artists. It's also used for many other types of mediums. Um, you can find it at most craft stores, hobby stores, or even on Amazon. So I'll just show you how that looks. So it just pipes out just like that. And I'll show you as well in comparison to the Vitria.
so there you can see it it's very they're very similar a little bit different in coloring but very 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 similar so so that was the two options that i think are the best um if you're not able to sorry let me actually show you the coaster with it so again you can see it works very well um now if you're not able to find either of these two options then and you need a very kind of you know, simple option that maybe doesn't require any mixing or something maybe you already have. Um, you could definitely just go straight to just a, you know, a simple matte acrylic color. Um, so this one here is called Basics by Liquitex. So um, I didn't mix this one. It actually, I, I actually did actually, sorry, I did mix it. I put, I took the titanium white and I tried to make it pearl. I took some pearl, um, pigment paste, sorry, pigment powder. And I tried to mix it to get that pearl sheen. Um, the titanium white wasn't having it. So basically it just sucked up all that pigment powder and still looked super white <laughs> when it was done. So I'll show you what that looks like here. So you can see it doesn't have that pearlescence to it. It's more of a flat white, but it does have a similar look so like i said and if you can't find any other products this one works just as well in terms of holding up its shape and getting the design done for you it just doesn't have that pearlescence to it and maybe if you do find um, a brand similar to this that does have a pearl a pearlescent color um, that might work just fine as well i wasn't able to find any um just kind of you know rummaging around um, so what I have in stock here so um, I use this and I think it worked just fine as a you know quote unquote basic option um, and again I just put that inside one of these precision applicators that has the metal tip and then I um, just piped it through so again use my needle to I guess so the great one thing about these applicator tips is sometimes they do get a little bit clogged they do come with these pins so you can just kind of clear it out quickly and then again piping a line so there you go so you can see how much whiter that is than the pearl so again, it can definitely work depending on the design you're looking for or just what you have available to you. So there you go. So those are the three options. Um, hopefully between these three, you can find um, something that works for you. Okay, so we're ready to start painting and we are going to go ahead and use the outliner here. I'm going to create small circles or small little flower petals because I want to mimic the look of a lilac or a hydrangea. So they have very small little flowers that are in clusters to kind of make it look like a larger bloom. So that's what we're going to be doing here with the outliner is just creating small petals um, or like mini flowers in a larger cluster. So we'll go ahead and do this. I'll do this in a time lapse so that you can follow along. And once we're done here, we're going to leave it to dry for about an hour or so. Um, and again, depending on the material that you're using, you may need to leave it longer. So just basically just want to make sure that it's dry to touch. So we'll go ahead and watch the time lapse and I'll see you on the other side.
Okay, so it's been a couple hours and now our outlines are dry and ready for color. So we're going to be using Let's Resin's Resin Dye and I've chosen a few colors that I'm going to be using. I have a light blue, violet, and a couple greens for the leaves. And we're going to be mixing those with some gloss varnish. So the DuraClear gloss varnish. And uh, I only need a couple drops into each one of these little um, pots of color. And we don't want it to be too opaque because the great thing about this dye is that it's very translucent and it doesn't cloud the varnish or resin if you're using it. It does keep its transparency. So again, we're going for a stained glass look, so that's going to work out really well for us. So I'm going ahead and I'm just going to be adding color here and I'm blending the purple and the blue slightly because I want that watercolor look that hydrangeas and lilacs are known for. So blending those and normally when I do stains, my stained glass technique, I normally try to keep with inside the lines. But for this one, because the flowers are so, the details of the flowers are so small, it's okay that we're going to be able to just paint over top. It does slightly tint the outliner as well, but I think for this application, it actually works out pretty well. So I'll go ahead and finish this up in a time lapse and then I'll see you on the other side. So we're almost done here filling in the color. So once it's done, we're going to let it sit. Now, the amount of time it needs to sit and dry will really depend on your varnish. Mine normally takes about five or six hours, but sometimes I leave it as long as 12 hours, depending on you know the size and detail of the piece. And I wanna make sure that the gloss varnish is very, very dry. Um, there's no moisture left in it before we go ahead and pour our resin on top. So we'll leave that to dry now. And once we're ready, we'll go ahead and add our top coat. So we're all set now to add our top coat. Um, for the resin, I am using my typical one-to-one -one medium viscosity resin for this piece, but um, I think if you're going to be using this mold because it is so deep, it's much better to use a, a deep cast mold. So something that's much thinner and it's going to help you with the bubbles and things like that to get them out. Um, I wasn't filling this mold the whole way. I have only filled it about a third of the way full. So that's the reason why I thought I was going to be okay to just go ahead with the medium. So, but just keep that in mind if you guys decide to try this to definitely go with a thinner um, resin just because that's going to also help you with um, flash cures and things like that. So once we're all done here getting the bubbles out, we'll leave it to cure overnight and unmold it in the morning. So it's the next morning and we're ready to get this out of the mold. So it comes out quite easily as you can see. 
And the tricky part of this now is going to be getting the film off the back. We don't need to leave it inside them on the resin, so we're going to go ahead and peel that off. It's a little bit tricky to find the edge, but we will get there. And once you find it, it comes off very easily. And there we go. So there is our final piece, and I can't wait to show you how this looks in indoors and outdoor lighting. So here we go. So here is our indoor lighting. You can just see it reflects the holographic uh, material so nicely. And again, even up to the window light, it just looks so pretty. And I'm also going to take this outside so you can see it. And again, it's just so cool how this reflects. And even with the stained glass look, we have the transparent colors and everything just works really nicely together. So I hope you guys liked this tutorial. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know. And if you're not already subscribed, please do so. And I will see you next time. Thanks guys. Bye.